You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Obehave is brought to you by Petco.com. Petco is a leading specialty retailer of premium pet food supplies and services, offering more than 10,000 high-quality pet-related products. Enter the code BEHAVE10, BEHAVE, the number 10, and get 10% off any order. No minimum at Petco.com. It's All Behave with Arden Moore, the show that teaches you how to have harmony in the household with your pets. Join Arden as she travels coast to coast to help millions better understand why cats and dogs do what they do. Get the latest scoop on famous faces. They're perfectly pampered pets in Who's Walking Who in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails. Garner great pet tips and have a doggone fur-flying fun time. So get ready for the pause and applause as we unleash your all-behave host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome to the OB Hate Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Our special guest today has been a delightful part of daytime television for more than 30 years. And she remains amazing and ageless and always intriguing. For all you fans of All My Children, you know her best as Brooke English, the classy rival of Erica Kane. Please give pause and applause to two-time, daytime Emmy Award winner, Julia Barr. Hey, welcome to the show, Julia. Thank you very much. That was a lovely introduction. Thank you. (laughs) Oh, very well deserved, you know. And I'm I'm happy to report, Julia, you are my first soap star to be a guest on my show. Oh, well, then I'm I'm very honored. Thank you. (laughs) And it, it also turns out we have more in common than I realized. And for you listeners, if you're curious to learn just what Julia Barr and I have in common, well, you're going to have to sit and stay because I'm going to reveal the answers right after we take this commercial break. Time for a pause. For furry ones, actually, sit and stay. All Behave will be right back. There's a movement afoot. Shoebuy.com. Join the millions of people who shop ShoeBuy.com's over 400 brands and 500,000 products. Order now and get free shipping and free return shipping. ShoeBuy.com, the world's greatest shoe store. Walk your dog in style and comfort. Enter the code BEHAVE, B-E-H-A-V-E, at checkout and get a 10% discount plus free shipping at ShoeBuy.com. Love your pets but wish their medications were a lot less expensive? They are at 1-800-PET-MEDS. You'll not only save on flea and heartworm medications, but on prescriptions for arthritis, incontinence, thyroid, and more. And you get fast service, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Plus, our licensed pharmacists ensure accuracy, monitor drug interaction, and more. See why over 5 million people have trusted their pet's health to 1-800-PET-MEDS, America's largest pet pharmacy. Call now or order online. Go to PetMeds.com forward slash behave, B-E-H-A-V-E, to get 10% off any order and free shipping on orders of $39 or more. If you ask the question, what do I want? What do I need? I'll take a back shot. Love My Pets, the new single by Mark Winter, available in iTunes. New York, the glitz, the glamour, the exciting Muttropolis, the sparkling kitty city that never sleeps. Join us each week for Pets in the City with your host, Diane West. 
Celebrity pet sightings, hot events, and news and reviews with the hottest movers, shakers, and tail waggers in New York. So take a bite out of the Big Apple with Pets in the City every week on demand only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. All Behave is back with more tail-wagging ways to achieve harmony in the household with your pets. Now, back to your fetching host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome back to the All Behave show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Our special guest today is actress and animal advocate, Julia Barr. Yes, the Julia Barr. I mean, for 30 years, she has masterfully portrayed the role of Brooke English on the daytime drama, All My Children. Her character, if I think I did some research, and you can correct me, Julia, if I'm wrong, but okay. you've been to the altar four times? Let me see. Uh, Tom, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Adam, Edmund, I think only three. What about Tad? Am Tad? I miss- Tad and Adam and... Oh, Tad, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, remember, <laughs> Tad, yeah, remember yeah. Tad? Four, four times, uh, like I said, probably the smallest number in daytime history of... of uh, <laughs> A, a woman who's been on the show for as long as I have, you know. I think well, usually it approaches more like 10 to 12 with, you know, oh. <laughs> That's <laughs> with, right. With and people. you've survived right. a plane crash, and you always have to match wits with your nemesis, Erica Kane, who's aptly played by Susan Lucci. But, exactly. you know, it seems like through all the dramas and traumas, your character, Brooke English, remains loved by zillions. So oh. that's that's good staying power these days. Well, thank you. You know, it's something. <laughs> it's a role that I've enjoyed, and an ensemble of people that I couldn't have asked for. You know, for a better environment in which to sort of you know ply my trade. Well, I think that's great. Now, I had teased everybody in the beginning, saying that uh, you know we do have some things in common. And you're probably going, oh, what's this crazy broad going to bring up? So don't worry. (laughs) Well, no, but I'm I'm curious. (laughs) (laughs) Well, all right. This was just my humble attempt at creating a little drama, you know, kind of the hallmark for successful daytime shows like All My Children. So in, in prepping for the show today, I was delighted to discover we share these commonalities. We are both Hoosiers. Oh. You're from Fort Wayne. I'm from Crown Point. Now, where, where is Crown Point? Crown Point is up near Gary and Hammond. Oh, okay. You always Hoosiers. beat us in basketball. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We both attended Purdue. Well, and I'm writing I, all this down. <laughs> I won't be telling the years because we're ageless wonders. That's but, right. Uh, I'm one of the rare people who go to a, an engineering and science school to get a degree in communications. Oh, interesting. interesting. Now, the other thing we have in common is we're both small but mighty. We're both about 5'1". So I tell people jokingly that I possess a very tall phone voice. Yes. So you can use <laughs> I have a tall t- attitude. There you go. <laughs> but I think most importantly, we both share a love for pets. And I think in our own ways, we're striving to bring out the best in, in people and pets. And, and so I'm delighted that you're on our show. It's called Oh Behave. You don't have to behave if you don't want to. It, it's up to no, you. No, I think that's such a cute title. I really do. <laughs> Well, thank you. Well, you have a furry family, a dog, Lucy. Are you and referring to my Ed husband? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and your husband, Richard. And um, your daughter is hair free, hopefully, and in the area that matters. Uh, Allison. She's Actually, awesome. yes. We have a furry household. So you've always kind of got into the world of pets, right? Well, you know, I, I grew up. Always, even when I was born, my parents had a little mixed breed dog named Skipper. And, uh, you know, my mother used to tell me that when they would put me in the bassinet and I would cry, the dog would get up, not put its paws, but just sort of sort of hop around trying to look into the bassinet to see what was in there. <laughs> and, and one time when I was about four years old, it was fall and there were a lot of piles of leaves and I was outside with a couple of friends and one of them threw a lot of leaves on me, and the dog actually jumped up and pushed her down. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Isn't that interesting? But anyway, yes, I have had animals from the time uh, I was born, you know, through my, you know, growing up. 
And then when I left home, I had rescued a cat named Ours. She was a calico, and she lived to be 20, Wow, which is amazing. And uh, then when I got to New York, I adopted another cat. He was part Persian and part Siamese, and his name was Leonard, and he lived to be 17. Wow, you feed these cats good stuff. I mean, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I have, we've had, you know, we've had in our family life, you know, when I uh, when I left home and with my husband and my daughter, we've had cats for over thirty years, and we've had dogs for at least the last fifteen years, and we had a rabbit for a while. <laughs> Silly rabbit. Um, you know, the campaign for uh, Easter now is make mine chocolate so people don't adopt. Oh, buy a rabbit, a- I know. Well, actually, our rabbit hopped into our backyard, and I saw it. You know, I knew it was a domestic and not a wild rabbit. I thought, oh, my, you know, somebody lost a pet or they, you know, let it go. So right. we rescued it and reported it to the police and told my vet, and nobody claimed it. So Lewis, <laughs> who was a, <laughs> a mini lop-eared rabbit, spent the rest of his life with us. I think he was a year when we found him, and he lived to be seven, which is his full lifespan. Yeah, and like actually, just, that's pretty good for rabbits. You know, I just uh, did some rabbit research. I don't know why my life is the way it is, but, you yeah. know, usually six to eight years is, is is like the Methuselah of rabbits. Well, you know what I, I heard? I think it also depends on the type of rabbit, but if they actually live outside in a hutch where they have protection and they go through seasons, they are right. hardier. Oh. And they live longer. I actually had a friend who had a rabbit who was outside in, in a hutch, you know, protected, but who, who lived probably close to eight years, ten years. But anyway, so we've had a menagerie. Um, <laughs> and right now, we- we're, <laughs> we're down to um, our, our mixed breed rescue, Lucy. She's a seven-and-a-half-year-old German shepherd lab, and we think some husky mix. And um, two cats, Ned, who's a year, Margaret, who will be probably is almost two. Now, I was seeing some photos. Is Ned the black cat or the... Ned or the, is the black cat, right. Okay, and then Margaret's the uh, the tuxedo kitty? Yeah, she's actually white and looks like she's got calico markings all oh, over okay. her. Even though she's not a calico, she was uh, came in. I was doing some hands-on, like one day a week, working actually in the shelter with the cats and things, and she actually came in. And um, I was looking at her for a week or two, and I thought, I think that cat should come home with me. <laughs> so, Isn't that amazing? They yeah, do. I think and they it, hypnotize us, don't you think? I think they have well, this you know, I, I think the sneak. <laughs> they, they just, there was something about her personality, and you never know, you know, when you already have a cat, if they're going to be friends or enemies or just not care about each other one way or the other, but they are in love. <laughs> oh, they so have we're having got, a little just, soap opera going on in the uh, yeah. in the Julia Barr household, huh? <laughs> no, I mean, they're just, um, I've always had two cats, you know, and they have been, they've gotten along, but they've never had this affinity that these two, you know, that Ned and Margaret have. It's it's very interesting, you know. Well, they give groom me each a little other specific. They, huh? they huh? groom each other? Oh, that's, that's... Oh, yeah, my daughter actually sent me some pictures of them the other day. And she goes, the most hilarious thing is Ned, when he wants to sort of nuzzle or, you know, sort of kiss Margaret, puts his paw around her shoulder (laughs) to, like, hold her close. And I said, oh, my. It's just too funny and it's too sweet. But anyway, they do go on. How does Lucy hang out with the two cats? Lucy has always been a laid-back dog and she likes them, but... You know, and she's, in fact, when Ned was very little, he went into Lucy's big crate and slept in the middle, and Lucy actually slept outside of her crate. Aww. She, she, Yeah, I know. And now they actually, what Ned has learned to share it, so he, like, will lay down in the front part so she can lay down in the back, and actually, I have pictures of it, and it's adorable. So that dog is, she's the sweetest dog you'd ever, you know, want to meet. So she, the cats to her, they're, you know, she doesn't care what they do. How did you uh, adopt her? You said she was a rescue. Lucy? Um, yes. Actually, through uh, an East Coast rescue organization, it's like one of the largest no-kills either in the state or in the country. It was It's North Shore Animal League. Oh, yeah. That's very big. Right, yeah. Yeah, and uh, actually our dog before Lucy, Nellie, we adopted, and Nellie, and, oh, it was very sad, she, she developed lymphoma when she was five. 
and so it was um it was fairly fast in terms of you know her you know passing away but um she also was from north shore okay um, well that's yeah. a very good place i know a lot of friends yeah, there well so. they you know they what's nice is that they have a lot of money and um if they have animals that can't be adopted for either health reasons or personality reasons those animals have a home there for the rest of their lives so it's a yeah it's a, it's a wonderful place well, currently, you when you're not uh, in front of the camera for uh, being on All My Children, you also are pretty active with the Save the Animals Rescue Team, too, and you've been involved with other groups in the world of pets, so let's kind of do that resume, if we will. Well, about, I guess, maybe seven or eight years ago, I, I uh, became involved with the Fund for Animals, which had been okay. started by Cleveland Amory, right. and um, I had a website that was had information and things about myself and all my children and actually we were partnered with uh, you know the fund for animals so on my website once a month we always had you know a newsletter with all kinds of sort of information about animals you know animal safety animal protection animal legislation and also for uh, the first year I think at least that the website uh, after the website started um, we did great interviews, with, uh, particularly with daytime people, about their animals and how they came into their lives, and you know. So it was very, it was very sweet about all of these people who also love animals, you know. On that one, on your site, the JuliaRoseBar.com site, I did see those interviews. I mean, you know, famous people that you've been working with for years that are good friends of yours. I love that Susan Lucci, who plays Erica Kane, has a, a Bichon aptly named Oscar or at the time <laughs> during the interview. Boy, does she dream big, right? <laughs> well, I think he looked like, and you know, he had this sort of, you know, her husband is Austrian, you know, Susan's helmet right. and for some reason i thought oscar really fit you know like it could be in you know like oscar winner <laughs> yes oscar winner <laughs> or, or an oscar like winner or, or an oscar winner yes <laughs> well then david canary i love him and i remember him from the way back when in the days of bonanza even he plays oh, adam Lord, yes. he had he had a dog sparky that he called no benji i guess he tried to make well no i ben- think that dog actually they um they rescued, well, not ex- not exactly rescued. I think the dog was part of the Walt Disney group of dogs that, you know, t- trained dogs. And I think they, a lot of times they actually rescue those dogs because they, they look for certain looks of dogs and many of them are rescues. And I think the dog probably wasn't really, you know, material for sort of being out and being a dog that that is involved in movies and films and so they adopted the dog i think the, i don't think the dog is with them anymore i think the dog well that's all right away. Yeah. he's but, always um, with him in his heart yeah that's true but that was that was uh, i believe wow. all that if i'm remembering correctly yeah you're doing well. You're doing well. We are speaking with Julia <laughs> Barr. She plays Brooke English on All My Children, and she does a lot of good for uh, the beans that have tail wags and emit a little bit of purr power. We're going to talk to her a little <laughs> bit more right after we take this commercial break. So sit and stay. We'll be right back. Time for a walk on the red carpet, of course. All Behave will be back in a flash right after these messages. FTD's network of over 40,000 florists around the world have been creating beautiful handcrafted arrangements for 100 years. Each arrangement is delivered the same day and backed by FTD's 7-day satisfaction guarantee. For a century, people have trusted their most important occasions to the flower experts at FTD. Since Pet Life Radio is all about puppy dogs and flowers, our listeners, that's you, can get a 20% discount on your order. Just go to florup.com and use the code OBEHAVE at checkout. F-L-E-U-R-O-P dot com. Code word O-H-B-E-H-A-V-E. There isn't anything we won't do to make sure they're getting the best products and the best care. So when you ask us a question like, So how do you feel about cat condos? We can say from experience, Feels like home. For her. Enter the code BEHAVE10 
Behave, the number 10, and get 10% off any order. No minimum at Petco.com. Hello? Danica, where have you been? Oh, Grandma, I've been busy, you know? Racing, GoDaddy girl. Oh, I built my own online store with GoDaddy. Really? Let me see. Grandma's auction.com. Hey, aren't those Grandpa's golf clubs? Grandma needs her bingo money. Use promo code BEHAVE10, B E H A V E, the number 10, and get a dot com domain name for just $7.49 at GoDaddy.com. Want to know what cats like to eat for breakfast? Mice Krispies, of course. Learn everything there is to know about cats on Catitude with your host, Tom Doc. Each week, we'll spotlight a cool cat breed, give up-to-date advice on cat health, and check out spiffy new cat products. So curl up on the couch every week for a perfectly enjoyable time on Catitude. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. PetLifeRadio.com. Hi, this is John Provost. You might remember me as Timmy from the Lassie series. Well, you know, every time Lassie comes home, she always has me turn on Pet Life Radio so she can listen to Arden Moore on that show, you know, Old Behave. Whoop! Whoop! We're back from the lot. Just check the paper and we had a record showing at the box. The letterbox, that is. Now back to Old Behave. Here's Arden. Welcome back to the OB Hay Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. I'm happy we have Julia Barr on our show. She, like me, is from Indiana. Ha, ha, ha. Indiana, Some of the most famous people have come from the <laughs> Midwest heartland. Don't you think, Julia? Yes, I do. We are, as they say, corn-fed and well-bred. <laughs> there you go. There you go. We're always polite because we never know when our car's going to get stuck in a snow thing. And oh, we need Lord, a- <laughs> yes. I know. I was talking to my husband today. We re- live right outside of Manhattan. Oh my and gosh. He, he sent me a picture of the backyard, <laughs> which you recognize the it? dog was sitting on the deck looking somewhat confused because she doesn't have really complete access to the backyard yet because there's about 18 inches of snow in there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I know. Oh, my gosh. But, yeah. Power you know, I love the what you do with pets, but, you know, you have amazing staying power. I remember when I first started watching all my children. It's a delight to see that there's a lot of people there that are still there. You know, the characters, Adam and, and Tad and, of course, oh, Erica yeah. and Brooke. Yeah. But this is kind of a testament. What do you think has made all my children uh, such staying power for all these years? Well, I think it's a couple of things. I think uh, initially I... It's Agnes Nixon, you know, right. um, the creator of the show, and who was intimately involved, and still is, but initially intimately involved for many, many, many years. And I think her feelings about what made a good story was the driving force. And, you know, they were always character-related and character-driven. And also, you know, she wasn't afraid to sort of take things, as she said, that we're in the newspaper and out there happening in society and bring them into Pine Valley because, it, you know, it reflected back to the world. You know, like our show through the years has done stories on AIDS and domestic violence and drug intervention and Mothers Against Drunk Driving, all kinds of stories that, that have been very impactful and resonated with the viewing audience. And, and um, you know, we've had a generational show, which is, you know, I mean, not so unusual, you know, where you have an older, a middle, and a, a young generation, so, you know, it keeps going forward, but I just think that we've had a very compelling cast through the years. I think we've had fantastic stories. You know, it, it ebbs and flows. It's gone through lean periods, and but I think what's happening now is we have one of our old head writers came back to transition us coming out to L.A., and she had been attached, Lorraine Broderick, for many years with the show. And I think she's really bringing us back into real character-driven story and sort of 
really delving down into the core of the show because without the core, you don't have the identity. And, you know, what you just mentioned about still having Erica and Adam and Brooke and Tad, it's like that's the identity, you know? That's right. where this show started from. And if you don't have a core, you don't really have a foundation. And it's just like, a, you know, a house. Without a foundation, you can't really build up and out, and you can't produce anything that's really valuable. So I think, you know, all those things have always been in place. You know, sometimes they've been stronger than others, but right now I have to say I think the writing and everything else is really all in lockstep together. And, um, you know, even with this move to L.A., which Mm -hmm. was semi-traumatic for a lot of people who are East Coast-based, you know, Right. Even with that, I think this show is really coming into a real second sort of, I don't even know how to describe it, not second wind, but really gathering. It's like a bottle of wine that is getting better. What do you think? Yes. And I don't want everybody to get drunk listening to you, but, you know, seriously. It is Friday, and it's almost... (laughs) Yeah, there you go. And And, uh, and you're back. I mean, your character is back. You were there for like 30 years, and then... I think that's wonderful, too. You know, they brought back about a year ago, I guess it was, maybe a little over, they brought back the characters of Jesse and Angie. And that really began to to firm things up and to re- I mean, here's here's a couple that were like kids, and they were romantic and, you know, went through all the things that, you know, like a young couple does, and have been off the canvas for 20 years, were brought back, and... It's like they never left, but they have a whole different sort of history that they bring with them, you know, and that all just cements a show. As far as I'm concerned, daytime is history. It's like when you watch a show that you've been watching for six months to 30 years, whatever, in that range, you have an identification with each and every character because you know who they are, where they've been, what they've done, and that's the strength of of daytime is is history. And I I think think that's very well put. Yeah, yeah, and it is. And like I said, right now they really are digging back into the history, and I think with my character reemerging on the canvas, it really, it sort of, it sort of brings this family on the canvas together in so many ways. And Maybe uh, in a way it was good. I know it's not fun when things happen. It's life, but in 06 right. when they said, see ya. I think it's great. It makes your character stronger and, and more in demand. People want to know, what has she been doing? So <laughs> apparently, um, Brooke has been in China. Is that correct? Well, China as part, you know, she has an adopted daughter who actually went to China and lives and works there. And her son, Jamie, with Tad, has been in Africa working for uh, an organization similar to one like Doctors Without Borders. So she has visited and traveled with them a little bit, but she's also had been out traveling with uh, an international magazine as a reporter, and uh, it went sort of belly up because of the economy. That sounds familiar. (laughs) So she she saw that they were interviewing for editors again at Temple Magazine and thought, well, she'd throw a hat in the ring again. Why not? And I saw the episode yesterday. I thought your timing was perfect when Adam's wife number gazillion annie thought she had the job and you want to go ahead and because it's no spoiler alert because it aired yesterday but right. tell us how your grace under fire with that i thought that was wonderfully played i think oh i said what did i say that uh, well something about he said you know oh, it's perfect you're here you you know you can step right back into the role or something of the job and i said well it seems that you know the job has already been positions already been filled <laughs> <laughs> by your wife that was very. I tactful, don't even remember what I didn't see yesterday's show, and I don't remember the exact. What you tell well, me? I think he he jumped right in and he said, "Well, you can mentor her, of course." Oh and, yes. And all of a sudden, I thought, <laughs> 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 Yeah, that, it's it's been a lot of fun. You know, she comes back. I think she misses home. She'd like to interview for the job. She loved being the editor of this magazine, but she's immediately pulled into not only the drama of. Annie and Adam, but the the bigger drama of Jr. and his health and his well being, you know, which brings right. everybody together. So, it's and been, if there it's is very a, interesting, huh? name is Miguel or somebody, there's supposedly another son of Adam. Yeah, <laughs> that just that pops out of the woodwork. Okay, maybe we'll. 
I, <laughs> right. Well, you'll see how that pans out, you know. We all, all go, right. oh, another child. <laughs> well, in all of this, I mean, you know, you seem to be in very good health and you've got a great sense of humor. I'm wondering if in some way playing a character on a, on a daytime drama has actually helped you maybe weather life in general. And I don't know, that role and plus the role that your pets have played and keeping you kind of grounded, keeping you sane, keeping you with a smile on your face. Has there well, been something like that at play? I tell you, in terms of my whole, you know, my life in general, being with all my children, you know, for 30 years and then returning, but... It provided a number of things for me. It was a wonderful venue in which I could ply my craft that I was trained for. It gave me also a, a real consistent life to raise a family, to have a husband and to raise our daughter because it was, you know, I worked a lot, but I was home by a certain time and that was, family life has always been very important to me. And so it, for me, it helped keep me grounded because I could do what I loved. I could have a family life. So all of those things, I think, continually fed each other. And what role did your pets play, do you think? Maybe when you've had a bad day at the office, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I guess I can't imagine a life without pets. It's from, like I said, from the time I was born, there has always been an animal in the household, from dogs to cats to a rabbit to parakeets to hamsters. We've had a, we've had a pet-filled life. So, I mean, it's just, it's one of those things that it enriches everybody's life. There's no doubt about that. I agree. And um, uh, I wanted to let you know, you keep mentioning the cats, and we love Lucy, and I, I have two dogs and two cats, and... I have written 20 pet books, and one of the books I'd, I think I'd like to give you is called Happy Cat, Happy You, and it's hundreds oh. of ways that uh, without a lot of time or money, our cats can bring out the best in us. So I will personally autograph it for you, oh. for Richard, Allison, Ned, and Margaret, and I'll sneak in in parentheses Lucy because, you know, Lucy's the dog. Would you like yeah. that? Oh, yes. That's lovely. Wow, I'm very impressed. Well, you haven't read the book yet, so don't. Well, worry. I'm just impressed by the <laughs> volume of, the, of <laughs> books that you've written. Well, well, you know, I have very strong typing fingers, kind of like uh, Brooke English does as an editor, right? <laughs> well, I could tell you some funny stories about that. No, um, <laughs> well, yeah, no I was just going to tell you something. You know, since I'm, I'm, you know, out of town, obviously, and my pets are back, you know, home. <laughs> I told my husband, I said, oh, I'm meeting all these dogs. It's like where I am. You know, there's a lot of people who are, you know, have dogs in this area. And it's like I almost force people to stop so they can pet their dog. Well, <laughs> you come down like to San Diego, I, you can come and pet Chipper and Cleo. My husband got me this great book called, I think it's just called Mutt, M-U-T-T. Okay. And it breaks down, like, physical features in case you have a mix dog and you're not exactly sure and you can sort of go through and go okay well the tail is like this <laughs> so that falls under that category the face shape the hair you know and you could pretty much figure out if you're not sure what we had thought all of these things were in our dog Lucy right. but when I went to this book it actually panned out that that seemed to be what what her physical features the categories that it fell into it was very interesting Oh, yeah. Well, I think Lucy's what I affectionately call a, who's your mama? Who's your daddy dog? Right. <laughs> That's very and there's cute. nothing wrong with it. Mutt's rule, you know? <laughs> oh, no, no. Well, what's oh, ahead yeah. for uh, your character? Is there anything? We don't want to do any spoiler alerts or what's up for you coming up on the show? And there are some other guests, I guess, some other alum returning, I guess. In, uh, yes. Some uh, well, actually, this, you know, James Mitchell, uh, a wonderful man and a wonderful actor who played Palmer Cortland, passed away in real life about two weeks ago, and I don't know if you knew that or not, but no, anyway, he was uh, much loved by all of us and, you know, in the dance community and where he started in television and in film, and they're writing a beautiful show for the memorial, you know, to, I mean, it will obviously honor James, but to honor the character that he played for probably at least 25 years. So that's coming up, and there okay. will be some alumni returning. I believe Nina, the character of Nina, Taylor Miller is coming back. Okay. Um, I believe 
Daisy Cortland, who was married to the character of Palmer in the form of, oh my God, I'm having a blank, Jillian Spencer is coming okay. back. And I'm not, that's all I know so far, but I know it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a, really a wonderful tribute. If you don't now, you do have to tune in to All My Children because it is its 40th year, is that correct? Yes. I mean, yeah. that's amazing. And uh, I was going on the Soaps.com site for All My Children, and it's great because you can catch up and find out what everything's going on. And I was looking at all the children you've had and the flings. Um, you may oh. have only had four marriages as a uh, Rook English, but... You, yeah, you know, I've been... Uh, I've been uh, yeah, I've, I have, I've had some, uh, some interesting times and, <laughs> you know, things that Eric and I have gone, you know, round and round about because we... We always, we always to go. We have a wonderful recycling project going on <laughs> in Alma Field, and Erica dates them, and Endor marries them, and then I date them, but I don't usually marry them. <laughs> no, so you do think green with a little dash of mean in there, the two characters, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> okay, definitely. That's good. Yeah. And I, Susan is pretty big in uh, pets too, isn't she? They've had Oscar, and I'm not really sure if they have Oscar anymore. I, we haven't talked mm-hmm. about pets in a while because I haven't seen her. In and well, not senior senior, but I mean we haven't had a real dialogue in a, in a couple of years. So I don't know what what's in their household at the moment. You know, okay. I All know right. she has her daughter has two children, and she's pretty excited about that. So, but I don't know about the pet <laughs> the the pet department. Well, I I did check a little interview you did a while ago, and and I was delighted to hear you and just confirm this. It said if you weren't an actress, you said you'd love to have been an animal trainer or worked with animals to rehabilitate and help people give a little comfort to people in need. Is that was that yes. still spot yes, on? That is spot on. Yes. Well, I think you do that off camera now all the time. Well, you know, being involved with the Fund for Animals for many years, and then really hands on. For the last year with the Save the Animal Rescue Team, you know, they're every Tuesday, you know, cleaning cat cages and, you know, making sure cats get affection and taking animals to the vet and helping an animal adoption. So, yeah, I've done behind the scenes and, and hands-on. But I just, I love animals. Well, they That's love you thing. too. And us two loggers love you too. You've been doing very well on All My Children and other venues and you know, I've been delighted to have you on as a guest on my show from oh, one Hoosier you. to another. Big thank pause you. up to you. We are speaking with Julia Barr. She plays the character Brooke English on the show All My Children. And I also want at this time to thank my very cool producer, Mark Winter. He makes this show happen each and every week. And most of all, I really appreciate you listeners. We have... Uh, zipped up our number of listeners Uh, we're growing faster than fleas on a labrador that's great in addition i want all of you to dash over to the petliferadio.com network because if you want to know about lizards or birds or fish oh my we have everything you can imagine and we have great hosts so until next time this is your flea free host arden moore delivering just two words to all you two three and four leggers out there Oh, behave. Coast to coast and around the world, it's All Behave with Arden Moore. Find out why cats and dogs do the things they do and get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get great tail wagging pet tips and have a fur flying fun time. All Behave with America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Every week on demand. This is the place for a special paparazzi treat, only on PetLifeRadio.com.